All right all and welcome back to a new video and another preview video this time leading up to the Aintree Festival. We're going to do the day by day previews yet again. They seem to be going down quite well. The Cheltenham ones, the Fairy House ones and now moving on to Aintree before punches down at the end of the season and then we'll attempt to get stuck into the flat action after that. The Fairy House meeting was up and down. Uh, it was a decent first day, it was a bad second day and then it was a good third day. Uh, my thoughts on the Irish Grand National, a bit hard heartbreaking to be honest I uh, wasn't far away with either latest exhibition or run wild Fred uh, run wild Fred confirming to me that he was a well handicapped horse he's just a bit of a monkey I'm not sure whether he really wants to get his head in front uh, something to just bear in mind I know some people were already talking him up for next year's national hunt chase I'll call I'll cool that talk just for now uh, but I would like to get some run wild Fred justice at some stage during the future latest exhibition I think he ran an absolute cracker I think he He's better going left-handed, and um, I still think he could make up into a proper grade one open chaser next year. He's probably not a Gold Cup horse, but he's probably not going to be out of place in the Savills or the Irish Gold Cup, because uh, he does seem to reserve some of his best form for Leopardstown, so something to bear in mind. But we move on to Aintree. Three days ahead of us, we've got day one, day two, day three, all of whom are very good cards of racing and obviously the Grand National comes on the Saturday so that will probably be the bumper one. I'll look into that in a bit more depth. I've got three or four selections for that race which I, I think you're always entitled to do to be honest in the National. You can have a stab at a few especially if a few of them are at bigger prices. I uh, wouldn't put you off that. Anyway moving on to day one's card. Seven races I think I've got 11 selections between the seven. So there's a couple that I am just sticking to the one. A couple of the races near the end of the <coughs> card, including like the Fox Hunters and the big two mile handicap chase. I'm throwing two in at you, uh, which I think is fair enough, especially the races over the national fences because they are very, very hard. The first race, though, the two mile four manifesto novices chase grade one over two and a half miles. And I'm going to stay true to a horse that's won me a fair bit of cash this year, being the shunter uh, for Emmett Mullins and Brian Hayes. He's currently four to one. He's seven to two in a few places. Now, I do understand he has to take this step up in grade and he, he mightn't be good enough. I understand that. But at the same time, he's a really, really improving horse. We don't know where the ceiling is with him. And I just don't know why they would just throw him into this race for the sake of things. Fusil Raffles came second in the marsh. I think that's fairly robust form. The marsh didn't look brilliant, though. And Asterian Furlange got beaten uh, in the Ryanair Gold Cup, or whatever it's called, in the big two-and-a-half-mile grade one on Sunday at Fairy House. Uh, and it was beaten quite comprehensively as well, which did let down the form. Chantry House obviously runs in the three mile race on Friday and uh, I just want to take him on at the top of the market Hitman's in there uh, he won a nothing race last time Eddie fell in the Silly Isles prior to that he has to go and prove that he's up to this level as well and also has to improve his jumping to be good enough El Dorado Allen I think was flattered with his second in the arc and he was ridden to pick up pieces and did so uh, but the third and fourth kind of slit their own throats there so I think if you run that race eight or nine times over I don't think El Dorado Allen will be finishing second as a result going to take a chance on the shunter I think he's still an improving horse and it's not the hardest grade one in the world and therefore i think he might take a bit of beating at four to one the 220 the doom bar juvenile hurdle is an anti-post selection that i put up in last week's fairy house day one preview so hopefully plenty of you were watching that i told you to get on mom morale at seven to four at the time and uh, he actually was nine to four early doors with, with william hill but he was seven to four at the time and uh, i took seven to four myself he's now currently uh, four to five he's even money in a few places i think he's going to win this race personally speaking i think it's a two horse race uh daggio is a horse i like an awful lot and I actually put him up each way in the triumph hurdle. I was, I thought the market was underestimating him, and he he ran the way I thought he would. I thought he would, uh, you know, outrun his odds, and he we we went and did so. My only issue with that is that he had a very hard race, I believe. Uh, you know, he's a horse that kind of leaves it all on the line, and he may be a little bit over the top after after a result of that. He also had a bout of colic just after his win at Chepstow. So you're wondering just how much racing this horse can take uh, for the rest of this season, and he may be just a hint over the top. He still has the ability. Mon Moral has to go and prove it. Adagio's the form bearer, and therefore adds, at the current prices with Mon Moral even money in Adagio 2-1, to one, you could maybe argue they should be a hint closer, but that being said, Mon Morab just brings such a 
beautifully unexposed profile to the table. I was really taken with the way he latched back on the bridle at Doncaster after making a shuddering mistake at two out. He then went and devoured Nassalam at Haydock and has been saved for this race ever since. I think he wants a bit of better ground. I'm hoping he goes novice chasing next year. I hope he wins on uh, tomorrow and boosts his claims for next year's Oracle because I think he's a smashing horse. And probably, as much as it's a poor enough price, will be one of my stronger fancies of the week. And hopefully, um, by 2.25, we'll know our fate for where we are with Mon Morale going forward, whether he is as good a horse as I think he is, or maybe maybe he isn't. Maybe Adagio, uh, who brings the, the standard... Uh, the, you know, he's the standard bearer of form in the race, uh, whether he's just too good for him. I think the two of them are well clear of the rest, and based off ratings, you'd have to think that was the case. The 250, the Betway Bowl, I think is an awfully hard race, if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, some horse has to win. Um, <clears throat> I, I look at the race and go... You can make cases against all of these and make very few cases for some of these. Glandes Oboe, you can't argue he's just been a little bit underwhelming this year. He was good at Haydock, was poor at Kempton and poor at Newbury, I believe. He should have been Beijing Secret Investor. Nada River is a very good horse. He's a horse I love, but he was on his head all the way in the Gold Cup. I think he had a pretty hard race there. Aintree probably not going to suit him either. Uh, I don't think a speedy three-mile one on good ground is really his cup of tea. Tiger Row, I know I just missed him for the cross-country and he came back and won, but... He has to go and prove it. I've never thought he was really up to this level in terms of open chasing, uh, even though his rating would suggest he'd have a chance. And we've obviously then got waiting patiently. Um, the perennial cliff horse for myself. I don't know what trip this horse wants. Um, he wants to pass horses, I know that. He wants to be handled pretty tenderly. Uh, you know if he's being ridden along in this race at three out or something, he's got no chance. But... I'm going to give him one more go. One more go. Uh, four to one. And the reason I say it is I do believe that, you know, if, if you just replicate the King George run, he should win this race, personally speaking. He beat Clandes Oboe that day. He was storming home at the finish, indicating that this kind of sharp enough three miles should be within his reach. He's going to be ridden patiently. Hopefully, you know, as the name would suggest, that's what wasn't meant to be a pun, to be fair. Hopefully he's going to come through horses, which I think he likes doing. And I, I'm just going to give him one more go. I do feasibly think, rather than people saying, oh, geez, you should give up on this horse. I do feasibly think that King George run alone is the best form this year out of this lot. So that being said... You know, in terms of the context of the race, he's fresh going into it. Hasn't run since January at Ascot. I'm going to give him one more go. And to be honest, he'd have to come very close. Otherwise, I'm going to have to give up on the dream. If he gets well beaten there tomorrow, I think I'm just going to have to give up. It's not going to happen for him. I just still have vivid memories of him winning the Ascot chase. Almost on the snap beating Q card with the Miranda Furlong clear. I want him to get back to that horse. I'm not sure whether he ever will or not. But it would be great for Ruth Jefferson uh, if she was to manage to get this horse back to winning grade ones. He's a horse of high class ability. Whether he's going to go and do it. I don't know, but I'm going to take one more chance at 4-1. to one. The 325, very interesting race, the Aintree Hurdle. Maybe not a vintage renewal, but a very interesting race nonetheless. I'm going to give you two for this, because there's two horses I really quite like. One being Jason the Militant, uh, who's currently 9-2. to two, So that's going to be a win bet on Jason the Militant at 9-2. to two. Only concern with him is ground. Uh, I do think he wants maybe a little bit more juice in the ground uh, than he's going to get here. But... That being said, he's going up to two and a half miles, so maybe it's going to be like an under so situation. You step up to two and a half miles on better ground, and that suit seems to suit. I just think Abacadabras doesn't... Like, I know this is going to be a pretty flat two and a half, but he's never struck me like he wanted a trip. Now, maybe I could be proven completely wrong on that, and if he goes and wins fair play, he's probably the classiest horse in this race, but... It uh, wouldn't be for me uh, over two and a half miles. I think he does have it to prove, and he, he is a bit of a bridal merchant, and I'd be concerned if he comes off the bridal, he won't find a whole heap. 
And then you've got McFabulous in there. And, and my second selection comes tied in with McFabulous. Because I see under no circumstances. I know there's a bit of a weight swing. But how um, McFabulous is going to turn that fun, well, form around with Brewing Up a Storm. And I'm going to put up Brewing Up a Storm at 6-1 to one each way to uh, join uh, Jason the Millen. I, I see what people mean in terms of this. You know, you probably shouldn't be backing two in a race like this. But there are two horses I like an awful lot. Um, I'm a big fan of Ali Murphy's. This horse has threatened in his career to be a really good horse. He went novice chasing last year and it all went haywire. I still think if he jumped round in the arc and he would have had a great chance of finishing bang there. Uh, but he jumped like a fridge and fell four out. Uh, he's gone back over hurdles after a few disappointing runs over fences at the start of this year. He absolutely sluiced in in a handicap hurdle uh, before winning the National Spirit at Fontwell. He did so impressively. Now he does have to find, you know, he was getting five pounds from McFabulous that day. They're now off level weight. But McFabulous is still two or three points shorter in the betting, and I can't understand it. I think McFabulous, I wouldn't say he's a hype horse, but I think people think he's a little bit better than what he's proven so far. He may be better than what he's shown so far, but he's going to have to prove that. He's been disappointing a couple of times this year now when the money's been down, and I just I just don't think he's as as good as maybe people think he wants to be, just currently speaking. He'd have to go and win a race like this before me to be thinking of it. You've also got Song for Someone, Booverdare in there, all of whom have chances. Song for Someone, I've always thought maybe wanted a little bit softer ground, although two and a half miles would probably suit. And Booverdare, take a leap of faith for somebody to be back in him, I believe. I just don't think he's quite the same horse that he used to be. If he came back to that form, he would have a sniff in this. But Jason and the Middleton and Brewing Up, the Storm, Brewing up a Storm for me uh, in the Aintree Hurdle. Moving on to the Fox Hunters, uh, which is obviously a two-mile five race over the banks again willing to take on bill away just about got him beat uh in the fox hunters at cheltenham he jumped pretty well though under paul town and patrick mullins back on this day i'm just not so sure he's going to really take to the national fences he's never been a massively uh great jumper of a regulation fence now sometimes horses you know come to the national fences and they're almost going to rejuvenate it by it and maybe that's going to be the case but i'm going to take two at bigger prices in this uh one my, my main one being a horse called some man for david christie barry o'neill takes the ride 17 to 2 each way i think this horse has got a, a bang chance i think he's going to be really suited by these race conditions he was a very well uh touted younger horse when he won his point to point as a four-year-old i think they thought he was one of the best they had and he went over to Paul Nichols. It all didn't go right. Uh, he had problems with his wind. He's had plenty of wind operations throughout his career. But he returned at Down Royal there, having had a couple of runs throughout the winter and three miles heavy ground, travelling nicely and not getting home. He ran at Down Royal there a couple of weeks ago over two mile three on yielding ground and absolutely bolted in. Now, this is a much stronger contest, but I think two and a half miles on good ground is exactly what this horse wants. He wants no further than that. And if he uh, takes to the fences... I think he's got a great chance of running a big race for Barry O'Neill. The one also I'm going to take a chance on is Late Night Pass at 10 to 1 each way. This horse ran an absolute stormer uh, in the Fox Hunters at Cheltenham when finishing fourth under Bridget Andrews. I think it was, yeah, I think it was Bridget Andrews. Um, ma trying to almost make all in the process and just ran out of steam. If he got in, if Late Night Pass got into a rhythm out in front, as he did at Warwick earlier in the season when winning a Hunter's Chase, this horse could be quite hard to peg back. And, you know, over 2-5 at Aintree, if you get into a good jumping on the front end, he, he could take a fair bit of pegging back. And sometimes these horses that have ran well in the Fox Hunters but maybe not stayed have had a decent enough record in this race. So I'm going to take a chance on him at 10-1 to and play the two of them against the field. The 440, the Red Rum Handicap Chase, again two for you in here. A horse uh, that was desperately unlucky in the Grand Annual was Zanza, and I think he's being overpriced in this. He's currently 10 to 1. I think this is too big a price for a horse who's off an unchanged mark of 145. He fell two starts back and was brought to a standstill by the fall, or, by the fall of Embittered in the Grand Annual there the last day. It's hard to know how well he was going at the time. He probably had a bit of rent bit of ground to make up but his form at Newbury would suggest that a return to a flat left-handed track like Aintree would suit this horse down to the ground me all Nolan takes the ride for Philip Hobbs obviously Dickie Johnson has now hung up the boots I think he's got a massive chance Destriere the favorite in here you're just backing it on the on the hope that Skelton has this horse well handicapped he's shown the back arse or nothing this year 
get away Trump is in there at the top of the mark I couldn't trust him as far as I could throw him and my other each way bet actually ties in with uh, get away Trump and it's a Donald McCain horse called Gaelic Coast who's currently 14 to 1 I think this horse is a decent chance of a mark of 136 was maybe a hint disappointing at Ludlow the last time but previous to that won against get away Trump over two and a half miles up in muscle but by four lengths now he is stepping back down to two miles but he's won over fences before over two miles and was a two mile winning novice hurdler last year as well so he obviously has a bit of speed his jumping would need to maybe brush up a slight bit but Brian Hughes will no doubt give this horse a fairly sympathetic ride probably ride him to come home well and I just don't understand how he's 14 to 1 and getaway Trump is 7 to 2 consider or not 7 to 2 sorry 9 to 2 considering getaway Trump is giving him 13 pounds here on the weekend or sorry 13 pounds tomorrow and was only giving Gaelic Coast a pound up in Musselburgh so Gaelic Coast is theoretically well in uh, even though Getaway Trump has gone on to win since and Gaelic Coast has been beaten since I still think there's enough of a price differentiation uh, to give this horse a chance and I'll play him along with Sansa. The final race the 5.15 the Mare's Bumper I couldn't put anyone off back in Eileen's over and I'm going to put her up at 5-6 to six. I want her to be as good as she's shown for Pam Sly and Paul O'Brien I want her to be really top class you know it'd be great for the game if she was and then maybe to go back on the flat and prove to be a a good you know maybe listed group class horse over staying distances on the flat it would be great for the game Pam Sly has waited an awful long time since her 1000 guineas winner uh, back in the late 90s to get another good filly on her hands and this one looks a very very good one her form at market race and has stood up the test of time and hopefully she goes and gets the job done I am going to play just one each way behind her just because it's a four place race for a bumper which is always uh, nice enough I just don't know she has an awful lot to find on the bare figures but a horse called Me Too Please uh, for Arthur Moore. Rachel Blackmore takes the right. This horse is 14 to 1. Won at Down Royal a couple of weeks ago, beating a Kerry Bryan horse uh, who had all, all right form in there. Gavin Cromwell had a horse called Presenting New York back and forth. It was actually second to Brandy Love the time before that. So the form b- looks okay without being overly special. I just wonder why Arthur Moore is running her in this race. Arthur Moore is a shrewd enough operator. And I don't think she, he'd just be throwing her over there for the good of his health. You know, Delvino went over, or not Delvino, Santa Rosa went over there for Dermot McLaughlin a couple of years ago. And it was similar enough. You're there going, surely you're not just bringing her over just for you know, the good of good's sake. Uh, I think this horse could run a big race at 14 to 1. She's actually fourth favourite in the race because the, the first two are so far clear. Eileen Dover and Ellie Bell, who obviously ran a super race in the champion bumper. I'd take Eileen Dover to be the slightly fresher horse of the two and I think Aintree will suit her. But me too, please. Certainly want to, to keep the eye on. Uh, whether you want to go and back her each way or not, I'll, I'll leave that down to yourself. But certainly want to keep an eye on. I wouldn't think Arthur Moore is just throwing her in here for the fun of it. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video if you did please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below and of course give me your best bets for day one of the Aintree Festival no naps uh, for today I'm not really strong enough on anything Mom morale I'm not going to nap up at, at even money um, at 7 to 4 he was a pretty good price and I'm going to put down 7 to 4 because I did advise him at that price uh, probably my strongest bet of the day would be some man each way uh, in the Fox Hunters it's not a nap selection, but he'd probably be my strongest of the day. I think he's overpriced at 17 to 2, and I think he could cause a bit of an upset uh, for a slightly smaller Irish outfit than maybe the Mullins and Mullins team. So let me know what your thoughts are down below, your selections, and hopefully we have a very good week back and plenty of winners before leading up to the National on Saturday. Until uh, tomorrow evening, where I'll be back for the day two preview and final selections. Hope you stay safe, stay well, land a few winners. I'll see you guys then. <laughs>